In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I will go to the altar of God, to God my exceeding joy. I will wash my hands in innocence, so I will go about your altar, O Lord, that I may proclaim with the voice of thanksgiving and tell of all your wondrous works. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, the world without end. Amen. Take away from us our iniquities, we beseech thee, O Lord, that with pure minds we may be made worthy to enter in to the Holy of Holies. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Good morning and welcome to our midweek divine service for this 18th week after Trinity. As hopefully you can see on the screen today is a votive divine service for the Holy Spirit. And votive simply means it's a service you can do anytime if you want the focus to be the Holy Spirit instead of the regular appointed readings, etc., for the day. And since today is not a feast day, we are free to do that. So today we have a votive service of the Holy Spirit. Other announcements, there's Bible study here in the chapel this afternoon at 2 o'clock. Excuse me while I try not to fog up too much. That's not tape. Um, and then tomorrow, hymn sing at 10 o'clock. So Bible study at 2 this afternoon. We are studying the biblical basis for our worship service. And anybody can come. Just because you missed a few sessions on the front end, that doesn't mean you can't come. We're going to pick up at the Gloria today and talk about that. So please join us at 2 o'clock. Those are all of the announcements I have for today. So we'll take just a brief moment to prepare ourselves in prayer, and then we will begin with the invocation. Here we beseech thee, O Lord, the prayers of thy people, and spare those who confess their sins unto thee, that thou mayst bestow upon us both pardon and peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. 
Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of the word, I therefore forgive your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with singing the Kyrie. pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy, for the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord, have mercy, for the peace of the whole world. For the well-being of the Church of God and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord, have mercy, help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord, Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. O oh God, who taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending them the light of your Holy Spirit, grant us by the same Spirit to have a right judgment in all things and evermore to rejoice in his holy comfort. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Our first reading for today is from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as a fire, and one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And when this sound occurred, the multitude came together and were confused because everyone heard them speak in his own language. Then they were all amazed and marveled, saying to one another, Look, are not all those who speak Galileans? And how is it that we hear each in our language in which we were born? Parthians, 
and Medes and Elamites, those dwelling in There we go. Parthians and Medes and Elamites, those dwelling in Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya adjoining Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them speaking in our own tongues the wonderful works of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word. And my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. And he who does not love me does not keep my words. The word which you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while being present with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You have heard me say to you, I am going away and coming back to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice because I said I am going to the Father, for my Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it comes that when it does come to pass, you may believe. I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming, and he has nothing in me but that the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father gave me commandment, so I do. Arise, let us go from here. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Our hymn of the day is Spirit of the Living God. We will sing it through twice.
May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in thy sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I had a sermon all planned out, but appropriately enough, the Holy Spirit, I believe, is leading me to say something entirely different. So, here's what caught my ear and my heart during the reading of the gospel today. Jesus says, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. The Holy Spirit teaches us everything there is to know about Jesus. The Holy Spirit inspired inspirited, filled up with the Spirit, the man who wrote down all of the scriptures. That's what that word inspired means. It means breathed out by God to teach us about Jesus. The Holy Spirit called you to faith. I believe that I cannot by my own reason or strength believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to him, but the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, gathered me into the one true faith, sanctifies and keeps me in this holy place with Jesus. The helper, the comforter, the teacher, the guide, the Holy Spirit is all about teaching you Jesus, giving you Jesus, filling you up with Jesus. You cannot get too much Jesus. So pray that the Holy Spirit never leaves you. And there's only one reason the Holy Spirit would ever leave you. See, God the Holy Spirit came to you of his own free will when you were baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And he joined you together with Christ as children of the Heavenly Father. Amen. Now he'll leave if you kick him out. If you say, I don't want to listen to what you have to say, I don't want to eat what you have to feed, I don't want to walk the way you want to lead, I don't want to be the way you want me to be, I'm kicking you out. Well, then the Holy Spirit will go. And then you are bereft of all the gifts of God, for faith is no longer there. Without the Spirit, you cannot believe. Remember, we just confessed that. But the Spirit, He doesn't want to leave. He promises not to leave. And Jesus tells us that the Spirit, whom the Father sends in His name, will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. See, that's what the Spirit does. Brings to mind what Jesus says. Recalls for us what Jesus has done and promised to do. Strengthens us in our faith and does everything he can to point at Jesus. Jesus. Behind the screen, Jesus. Picture in the Bible, Jesus, 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 oh, Jesus, more Jesus. Mm. I'm looking for some more Jesus. Do you see any Holy Spirit pictures? I don't. Oh, there's one. But what's in the middle? 
the cross of Jesus with his name on it in Greek, I-H-S. The Spirit's job is to do exactly what Jesus says. He will bring all things that I have said to you to remembrance, and he will teach you all things. Now, what has Jesus said? Just the red letters in the Gospels, right? Wrong. Everything from in the beginning at Genesis 1-1 to come, Lord Jesus, amen, at the end of Revelation has all been said by Jesus. So the Spirit leads us through the Scripture. The Spirit shows us Jesus. The Spirit, a Spirit-filled church, you ever get asked that? Is your church Spirit-filled? Usually meaning, do you have Spirit fingers or and people say that's talking in tongues or they're snake handling and all that kind of weirdness well spirit filled means word filled if you can be full of Jesus you know you've got the spirit one of my few memories of high school in Texas, football is everybody's almost religion. So every Friday night, you went to the football game. And when you're in school, man, it is the thing. You bought ribbons to wear, and every class had its own chants and yells and sections, and we had pep rallies every Friday and all this kind of stuff, leading to this point. At the football game, the students would all sit together in one section, and we'd yell across the field at the other folks, we got spirit, yes we do, we got spirit, how about you? And they'd yell back and see this is a strategy game because you want to be the one at the end to say, we got more, we got more, right? We play that game in church too. We got spirit, yes we do. We got spirit, how about you? Is yours a spirit-filled church? Well, if it's a Jesus-filled church, you know it's spirit-filled because that's the spirit's job. Now contrast that with the very end of the gospel today where Jesus warns us about the end of the age. He says, I, know, I will no longer talk much with you for the ruler of this world is coming and he has nothing in me. Who's the ruler of this world? The devil, the antichrist, the, the flesh, the news, the talking heads, everybody without faith. It's that enemy St. Paul talks about at the end of Galatians 6, for we do not fight against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, and the powers with authority in the air. That's the ruler of this world, the devil, because he got kicked out of heaven already, so woe to us who are here. Now contrast what Jesus says about him. He has nothing in me. He's got nothing to do with me. He's got nothing to say about me. He's got nothing godly about him at all. Versus the spirit who is all about Jesus. It's a great reminder for us to take stock of our worldliness versus our holiness. Who do we give more time and credence and worry and work to? The prince of this world? Or Jesus whom the Holy Spirit sends us to? Who do we appreciate more? The prince of this world and the gifts he gives, money, health, you know, all that stuff we want, bread, power, 
or Jesus who gives forgiveness, life, and salvation? There are two spirits waging a cosmic battle for your body and soul, and mine, too. The Holy Spirit and Satan, a fallen angel. And in that battle, we know who has already won. Jesus has. But the devil's like a, a possum in a trap. You ever seen a possum caught in a trap? They're mean to begin with, but once they're caught in a trap, they will eat you. They just go crazy. That's what the devil does. And if you get close enough to him, he'll eat you. The devil prowls around like a lion, just waiting on a chance to gobble you up, to paraphrase St. Peter. The Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, he doesn't want to devour you and destroy you. He wants to fill you up with the goodness, the blessings, the forgiveness, and the life of Jesus. Those are the two things Jesus talks about today. And praise be to God, this is a spirit-filled church because it is filled with the word of Jesus. It is filled with the presence of the Word made flesh, Jesus. And it is filled with the gifts of Jesus. Chief among them, eternal life and the salvation of your body and soul. And how do we know that? Well, there's only one way. We got the Spirit. Yes, we do. Praise God and amen. Let us pray. That God, our Heavenly Father, will continuously send us His Holy Spirit, that He may continually teach, preach, and fill us up with Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy that the world would repent of its worldliness, that those not in the one holy Christian church may be moved by the Spirit to repentance, that their souls may be converted, and that they may join us in the fullness of the blessings of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all those whom we know and love who stand in any need, pain, sickness, or affliction, whom we name now in the silence of our hearts. That God would grant healing to the sick, relief to those in pain, comfort to those who are in any distress, and salvation unto us all. Let us pray to the Lord. In thanksgiving for all the Spirit's gifts, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control, pointing us to Jesus, teaching us Jesus, filling us with Jesus through the Word and the sacrament, for making this a spirit-filled church. We give thanks to you, O oh God. Continue to send us the spirit and all those many blessings. Let us pray to the Lord. These and all our prayers we raise up before you, O oh Lord Jesus Christ, trusting in your mercy. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Amen.
The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and all places offer you thanks and praise, O Lord God our Father, through Jesus Christ our Son, your Son. Today, chiefly, we offer you praise and thanksgiving for the work of the Holy Spirit, who, filling us up with Jesus, points us always to his word of everlasting life and his sacraments of forgiveness and salvation. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the hosts of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, Drink of it all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Remember us in your kingdom, Lord, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be made whole. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve me to life everlasting. Amen. What shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will offer the cup of salvation. I will take of the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, and so shall I be saved from my enemies. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my body and soul unto everlasting life. Amen. I'm going to come by first and offer all of you hand sanitizer. Who wants any of that? The body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. The body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you, for the forgiveness of sins. Amen. Amen.
the body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. The blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Amen. May thy body, O Lord, which we have received, and thy blood, which we have drunk, cling to our innermost being, and grant that no sin of stain remain in us who have been fed with this pure and holy sacrament. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Excuse me a moment. Okay. Nothing's on fire.
the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you to life with God that has no end. Depart in peace. Amen. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us in fervent love, in faith toward you, and fervent love toward one another, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, bow your hearts. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty and eternal God, we adore thee as the God and Father of our Lord Jesus our Savior, and unite with angels and archangels around thy throne with the glorious company of the patriarchs, prophets, apostles, martyrs, and saints in heaven, as well as with thy church militant on earth in ascribing unto thee honor and blessing, thanksgiving and praise. Holy, holy, holy art thou, Lord God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of the majesty of thy glory. Thou hast created us in thine own image. Thou hast redeemed us with the precious blood of thy Son. Thou hast sanctified us by thy spirit and called us out of darkness into thy marvelous light. Grant, we beseech thee, that at all times we may be duly sensible of these unspeakable mercies and manifest our gratitude not only with our lips but also in our lives by surrendering ourselves to thy service and walking before thee in righteousness and holiness all our days. Deliver us more and more from the bondage of sin and error from the power of the flesh, from the corruptions of the world, and from the temptations of the devil. By your Holy Spirit, through the word and sacraments, give unto us faith, faith which holds on to Jesus, faith which works in love, as well as hope that makes us not ashamed in charity which never fails. Confidence in thee that shall never be shaken, patience that shall never faint, courage that shall always be ready to confess Christ that we may live in your fear and die in your peace. Through the infinite merits of Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with thee and the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our final hymn for today is Blessed Quietness. Bye. 
Like the rain that falls from heaven, like the sunlight from the sky, so the Spirit Ghost is even coming on us from on high. Blessed quietness, holy quietness, what assurance in my soul. On the stormy sea, he speaks peace to me. How the billows cease to roll. See a fruitful field is growing, blessed fruit of righteousness, and the streams of life are flowing. Blessed quietness, holy quietness, what assurance in my soul. On the stormy sea, he speaks peace to me. How the billows cease to Habitation for the quiet resting place. Blessed quietness, holy quietness, what assurance in my soul. On the stormy sea, he speaks peace to me. How the billows cease to Amen. Thank you for joining us for worship today, either here in the chapel or on Facebook Live or on Channel 64. Uh, it's always a pleasure to be here. Our scheduled guest preacher could not be here, so that's why you got stuck with me. Um, hopefully next week we will get back on track with our guest preachers. Um, Bible study at 2. If I don't see you before then, God bless you until then. Amen. I'll play some postlude music for us as we end our worship.
and to 